Hello everyone, I'm Anika Balal and today I will talk about effects of SGLT2 inhibitors on cardiovascular outcomes in older adults. And this is a systematic review and meta-analysis. The global population is aging and the prevalence of diabetes and cardiovascular disease increases with age. It is projected that by year 2100, approximately 30% of the global population will be older than 60 years. Also, there is an increasing trend of diagnosed diabetes in older adults in the USA. According to a recent report, 33% of adults 65 years or older have diabetes. Old age is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and there is a two to four fold increased risk of cardiovascular disease in patients with type 2 diabetes compared to general population. So diabetes and cardiovascular disease in older age could be challenging for the healthcare providers because of their chronic nature. But imagine the dilemma when in 2007 a meta-analysis was published which showed increased cardiovascular mortality in people taking rosiflitazone versus placebo. This turned out to be perfect strong, which was followed by FDA guidance for industry on evaluation of cardiovascular risk for all new anti-diabetic therapies in 2008. Since the implementation of this guidance, more than 28 cardiovascular outcome trials have been conducted involving more than 200,000 patients with diabetes. All these CVOTs were multinational, event-driven, randomized controlled trials with the primary outcome of composite of major adverse cardiovascular event or MACE which comprised of cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, stroke and or hospitalization of unstable uh, angina. As per FDA guidance, if the upper limit of the 95% confidence interval of hazard ratio was less than 1.3, the new drug was considered non-inferior or safe compared to placebo. And if the upper limit was less than 1, the new drug was considered superior compared to the standard of care. All the new anti-diabetic drugs showed cardiovascular safety and some even proved cardiovascular superiority, but data in older adults was limited. Since older patients with diabetes is a heterogeneous group and often have 10 to 20 or more years of productive life, it is imperative to consider appropriate pharmacological agent with safe cardiovascular profile when treating this population. Based on this, we designed a systematic review and meta-analysis of newer antihyperglycemic drugs like DPP-4 inhibitors, GLP-1 receptor agonist, and SGLT2 inhibitors. We looked for outcomes like uh, MACE, cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, stroke, and all-cause mortality in different age subgroups. This meta-analysis was registered at Prospero. Today, I am going to share the results of SGLT2 inhibitors in the age subgroup of less than and more than 65 years with you. So, SGLT2 inhibitors is a new class of antihyperglycemic agents that improves cardiovascular and renal outcomes in patients with type 2 diabetes. They block the glucose reabsorption from the proximal tubules of nephron, resulting in increased glucose excretion. This results in a decrease in plasma glucose levels, decrease in body weight, decrease in blood pressure, decrease in plasma uric acid levels, and decrease in albumin excretion. Coming back to our meta-analysis, the trials we selected were randomized controlled event-driven cardiovascular or kidney outcome trials with newer antihyperglycemic drugs. We looked for studies with 1,000 or more adults enrolled for at least 12 months follow-up and reporting subgroup analysis by age. We excluded studies which were completed before the FDA guidance in 2008. We reviewed 2,685 records and selected 5 studies. These studies were AMPA-REG outcomes, 
canvas program declare to me 58 credence and vertice cv here are the baseline characteristics of the participants in these studies there were approximately 47000 participants enrolled with about 45 to 50 percent age 65 years or older the average age of the participants was 63 years and majority of the participants were obese with a 10 plus years of diabetes duration and a history of cardiovascular disease let's take a look at the results of this meta-analysis we extracted the data from these studies and used random effect model to analyze it i am not going to go into the details of the heterogeneity of the individual outcomes because that could be biased considering the small number of trials but overall there were small to moderate amount of heterogeneity in these trials for the primary outcome of time to first maze which included cardiovascular death myocardial infarction and or stroke there was significant risk reduction with sglt2 inhibitors use in the overall population but when we analyze the subgroups by age the risk reduction was not significant so the trend was there in fact if you look at the data from the older adults there was a trend of risk reduction primarily driven by mprig trial for cardiovascular death there was a significant risk reduction with sglt2 inhibitors in the overall population as well as in the in the type 2 diabetes patients of 65 years of age and younger however for older adults the risk reduction was not significant though there was a trend of decreased risk primarily driven by mprig trial and similar results were seen with all cause mortality with significant risk reduction in overall population and in younger population but the risk was not significantly reduced in the older adults Though again, the trend of risk reduction was primarily because of MPRIG trial. As for myocardial infarction, the risk reduction was not statistically significant for overall population or for any age subgroups. And for stroke also, the risk was not significantly different in overall population or in age subgroups. So in conclusion, SGLT2 inhibitors when compared to standard of care significantly reduced risk of MACE, cardiovascular death and all cause mortality in overall population. In people who were younger than 65 years of age, there was a risk, significant risk reduction in cardiovascular death and all cause mortality. However, in older adults, though the risk reduction was not significant, there was a trend of decreased risk of mace cardiovascular death and all cause mortality this trend was primarily driven by empagliflozin the heterogeneity though moderate could be biased because of small number of studies here are my acknowledgments and thank you so much for listening